is the book of Revelation literal? We're going to give you a literal answer to that question. This is a painting I did uh, of the book of Revelation some years ago. And it's on poster board like that. And we're going to be using that as a reference point as we go through our subject. Now we're going to be talking about right here the Antichrist, the beast, and the seven-headed beast with ten horns, and the second beast that comes up out of the sea. When the book of Revelation calls the Antichrist a beast, why does it call him a beast? Is it a literal beast? When he says the beast has ten horns, is there somewhere in the universe a beast with ten horns? No, not necessarily. We're going to see that this is a signifying, a signifying scriptures of truth tells the answer. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. Notice that, to show unto his servants. So the book of Revelation is intended to show someone something. It's not intended to disguise it and cause you to be confused. It wants you to understand it things which must shortly come to pass. So it's literal events that it's going to show. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Now this book of Revelation, the whole book all the way through, is John has a vision. And in this vision, he sees all these signs, these symbols, uh, metaphors, figures of speech, each one describing an actual literal person or literal event. The question is, how do we know what he's talking about? That's a very simple answer to that. Who bear record of the word of God, so forth, write the things which thou hast seen. At this point, he had seen this candlestick with seven limbs coming out, and he saw Christ standing in the middle of it, and he said that was the representative of the seven churches. So that's the things which he had seen, and he said the things which are the things which are were occurring second and third chapters of the seven churches of Revelation. And then he said the things which shall be hereafter. So Revelation chapter 4 all the way to the end are the things which shall be hereafter. So he's revealing this through some signs, some figures of speech. So who is the beast? Revelation 13, 11, I beheld another beast coming out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. So here's a beast coming out of the earth. All of these figures are clearly defined throughout the Bible. The earth represents the nations, the people, the whole earth, coming up out of the earth, and he had horns like a lamb, which is not, not very threatening, and he spake as a dragon, which is Satan. And he exercised all the power of the first beast, that was Antichrist, before him, and causeth all the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was here. Now, we'll go into that another time. That's the Antichrist. We're not concerned about that right now. What we're concerned about is the fact that he calls this beast coming up out of the sea right here on the painting is illustrated, looked like some kind of a dinosaur-looking creature. He doesn't describe it, so I just use my imagination on that one. And he doeth great wonders. That's this beast right here. So he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by means of those miracles which he hath power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast. Now that's this beast right here in illustrated in this statue like Nebuchadnezzar's image which hath a wound by sword and did live. That's another subject. You can, get, you can actually get my YouTube, go back and look at that on the Antichrist. Who's the Antichrist? And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So there's prophesied that this personality called a beast is going to make an image or are going to have an image made for him by a religious leader, can't take time to prove that, who is a beast coming up out of the earth. And he's going to cause all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. So this is a classic verse on the Antichrist. 
and that no man should buy or sell, save that he hath the mark, the name of the, of the beast, the number of his name. So we know the beast is a personality. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. So the beast is a man. And his number is six hundred, three score, and six. We won't go into that meaning of that right now. We did that in our Who is the Antichrist. You can see that. Maybe we'll cover that later here in the brief. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. Now, see, I, I can understand. You read the book of Revelation, what, what in the world is a beast with seven heads and ten horns? The thing is, the Bible defines every single one of these symbols. Seven heads, ten horns, and upon his thorns are ten crowns for ruling, and his head the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was likened to a leper. So, if you go back to the book of Daniel, it tells you who the leper is. And his feet were as the feet of a bear, book of Daniel tells you. And his mouth is the mouth of a lion, book of Daniel tells you. And the dragon, and the, throughout the Bible, and even the book of Revelation says the dragon is Satan. The dragon gave him his power and his seat. That's like a, a position in politics uh, and uh, authority. And I saw one of his heads. So he has seven heads. So that's seven personalities. One of them is wounded to death. You see that on the Antichrist message, you'll see there that the Antichrist is going to have, a, there's going to be an attempted assassination, and it's going to wound him in the head and cause him to be paralyzed on one side. And wounded after the beast, and they worship the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And that dragon was the one that came up out of the sea that represents, by the way, the Roman Catholic Church. You're going to that next week which gave power to the beast, and they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? So the beast, the Antichrist, is going to be a warrior. He's going to make war in the earth and settle a lot of the earth's crisis, and people are going to be thankful for it. Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom. So, oh, now he's telling us. He's telling us exactly about this fourth beast. The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth. This is in the book of Daniel. Going, going back, which shall be diverse from all the kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth and shall tread it down and break it in pieces and the ten horns out of his kingdom. Now here's an interpretation in the book of Daniel written five, six hundred years before Christ. Uh, so it's written nearly five hundred years before the book of Revelation. And he says, the ten horns out of his kingdom are ten kings that shall arise. So when you come to the book of Revelation, you have that, and you see it painted here, that ten-horned beast right there representing ten kings that shall arise. In the book of Daniel, they shall arise. They haven't arisen yet. They're going to arise at the beginning of the great tribulation. And another shall arise after them, and ten horns out of his kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall arise after them. That other after these ten kings is the modern-day Antichrist. And he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. So the Antichrist is going to be a part of a coalition of ten nations, ten kings. And he's going to be the eleventh that's going to arise by taking over three of them. He's going to conquer, make war, and conquer three of these nations. And that's going to give him a balance of power and control. He's going to get all ten of these nations under his control. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, going to persecute Christians, and think to change times and laws. He's going to change times. Watch for it. And they shall be given unto his hand until, so he's going to conquer and be, subdue the nations, until a time, a times, and a dividing of times. That's three and a half years, or the latter three and a half years of the tribulation. Now you say, why didn't he say three and a half? Because <laughs> the Jews didn't use numbers for time. They, they spelled it out or they used the alphabet for their numbers. And so that's the way it would have been said by Jew. And the, here's the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. So he's telling you about the seven heads and their seven kings. So it represents seven mountains and seven kings. Five are fallen. One is, so five are past history at this point. One is at the present, and the other is not yet come. That's the future Antichrist. 
So when John was writing, Rome was the one that was at that time. And the last kingdom that Antichrist will rule over will be the last one. He must continue a short space, seven years total, three and a half really. And the beast that was and is not, that's the Antichrist, even he is the eighth and is of the seven and goeth into perdition. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, or here in the book of Revelation, going back to Daniel, which have received no kingdom as yet when this was written, but received power as kings one hour with the beast. So this coalition is going to come together and make an agreement. And before they leave the room, they're going to find out the three of them that their kingdoms have been conquered by the Antichrist sitting there in the room with them. And then he's going to gain power over the others. And he's going to use that to assault the whole earth in effect. But he will, he will fail because the king of kings is coming back. And when he comes back, he's going to destroy these kingdoms and set up the kingdom of heaven on the earth. And that's down here at the blue circle right there on the chart. So uh, this is, I know, I know this is, there's no detail here. You can't do d detail in this length of time, but it is, uh, there's plenty of detail to be had. I've got uh, this book that goes with that Revelation painting, which gives you all the verses. If you notice, the verse references are here on it. Can you see them right down at the bottom? So each, each thing that I drew is in the book of Revelation, the reference is there, and then the book takes you to it. So if you want to study the book of Revelation, this is a good way to keep it all together in your mind and see the sequence of events. So click that button and subscribe so someone else will watch this. And look forward next week, we're going to talk about, oh, it's going to be a big subject. We're going to talk about the Roman Catholic Church and its little offsprings and the Protestant movement assisting the Antichrist and setting him up on the throne. I'm going to show you the scripture on that next week. Now, I'm going to show you my... Uh, a uh, little shot of the boat I've been working on. Some of you have been asking, how, how's the jet boat coming? Well, it's coming real good. I'm learning to weld aluminum finally. So here it is. See you next week. facilitates everything to be able to hang it like that where I can work on like I'm gonna work on the side here I'll show you I'm gonna work on this right down through here the well burnt through in a lot of places and I've ground it off you see right there where I didn't grind it it just it came through from the inside welding so I ground it down where I can get a good fresh weld and deep penetration so, I'm ready to go. I gotta do some grinding now.